Why, hi there. So did you hear the one about the animal that didn't have sex for 80 million years and then decided to genetically engineer itself instead? I got some really juicy stuff for you today, but I think we need to start by explaining what a rotifer is. Rotifers are some of my favorite animals, because even though most people have never heard of them, they're actually everywhere. Anywhere that there's fresh water, really, in moss and soil. You could definitely find some in this creek. Uh, you wouldn't see them, because they're only like a tenth of a millimeter. They're sort of pear-shaped, with a bifurcated butt that they used to hold onto things. And on the head, they've got a corona, which is sort of this hand-wavy, flaily thing that they used to shovel food into their mouths. And their jaws are actually inside their throat, so they kind of chew things after they've swallowed them, which is interesting. Rotifer is Latin for wheel carrier, because the corona moves so fast that it looks a bit like a couple of spinning propellers. And they can't actually swim with them. Whee! Look at it go! <laughs> Aren't they adorable? <laughs> the best. Let's just have some more rotifer footage. Oh yeah, let's see the corona come out. Man, that is cool. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a particular class of rotifers called the deloids. That's deloid with a B, because Greek. Now, deloid rotifers are delightfully weird creatures for many reasons, but chief among them is probably the fact that they, at some point in the revolution, gave up sex. They're like, nah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not worth it, let's not do this anymore. They possess an ability called parthenogenesis, which really just means virgin birth. They, you know, they pop out babies without any kind of copulation involved. No one's ever seen a male deloid rotifer. As far as we know, there aren't any. They're all female. They just clone themselves. Just millions of little swimmy, faily, pear-shaped Virgin Marys. But at this point, you might be wondering, aren't there lots of living things that reproduce asexually? And yes, yes, there are. There are, you know, like, there are parthenogenic lizards, and, like, some aphids, and some beetles, and many plants, like dandelions, and blackberries, and... Now, what sets the deloid rotifers apart is not that they rely entirely on cloning themselves, it's that they've been doing it for so long. I could probably spend an entire episode talking about why some organisms have sex and why some of them don't. It's a fascinating subject, but uh, here's the short version. Sex is super expensive. Like, at a casual glance, sex seems like the bad option. It costs lots of energy to produce sperm and eggs, and it's complicated, they have to come together, you have to find a mate. Each offspring that you produce sexually is only worth half as much in evolutionary terms because they only have half of your genetic material. It's just mating systems and it's just a mess, you know? But the reason why sex is such a good investment, as it turns out, and the reason why most species on the planet do it, is because of recombination, the mixing of your genes with someone else's genes. Recombination creates variation, and variation is the driving force of evolution. It allows you to adapt to new circumstances. And in fact, if you look at the family tree of living things, you'll find one thing that unites nearly all the species that have forgone sexual reproduction at some point and moved entirely to cloning themselves. They're young. These aren't deep, wide lineages with many different species in them. These are like short twigs on the tree. And this tells us that evolutionarily speaking, asexual reproduction is a really great strategy in the short term. You'll get lots and lots of offspring. You'll spread across wide areas and like really successful. And then when times change, you'll be unable to put up the kind of variation that allows you to adapt to the changes and you'll die out, extinct. <laughs> So why is it that genetic data tells us that deloid rotifers have not been having sex for maybe as long as 80 million years? That's since the age of the dinosaurs, that's a hell of a dry spell. Long enough to diverge into hundreds of different species, all of them 100% female. Okay, this is when we get to the really weird stuff. Well, here's another thing you should know about deloid rotifers. Like tardigrades and some other animals that live in moist environments that frequently dry out, they possess the ability of cryptobiosis. They basically shrivel up into a dry ball, their metabolism slows to a halt, they essentially just, like, die temporarily, and then they, when things get nice and moist again, they come back to life and go about their business. It's a pretty impressive way of surviving in a harsh and unpredictable environment. Anyway, when deloid rotifers go into cryptobiosis, their cells take a hell of a beating. The cell membranes rupture, the DNA fragments, they patch themselves back up again when they reanimate, but the weird thing is that while they're in that state, Foreign DNA has a tendency of sneaking into the cells and sort of just, like, attaching itself into their genome. For most species, that would just be, like, a weird occurrence, probably harmful. But the deloid rotifers seem to have turned it into a lifestyle. This paper's a lot of fun. It was published in Science Magazine in 2008. It's called Massive Horizontal Gene Transfer in Deloid Rotifers. You know how sometimes on nature shows they find, like, a dead shark and they go through the stomach and, you know, uncover all kinds of weird crap that it had been eating? Like, oh, here's a bicycle tire and here's a life vest. And it's a bit like that, but instead they just went through the genome of this one deloid rotifer called Ananita Vega. 
There's a list here on the second page of all the genes they found that came from somewhere else entirely. Most of them aren't even animal genes at all. Plant gene is a fungal gene, that's another fungal gene. Bacteria, proteobacteria, cyanobacteria, acidobacteria. These are functional genes too, the, the rotifers are actually using them. So as it turns out, deloid rotifers are kind of like the dumpster divers of evolution. They just pick up genes from all kinds of things and just sort of put them to good use. And this may actually explain why deloid rotifers have been able to have such a long and rich evolutionary history without ever having sex. Sure, it's difficult to adapt and evolve if all of your offspring are identical clones of you, but hey, if you can pick up genetic material from your environment and stitch it into you like some kind of Frankenstein's monster, then don't worry about it! So the next time you find yourself by a creek, or a puddle, or a pond, give a gene sample. You might just be contributing to the evolution of rotifers, nature's own Frankenstein virgin mothers. Moist environments that frequently dry out, uh, they kind the fuck? Is that a frog? <laughs> that is an awesome sound. <laughs>